When a person does something wrong, it's only fair that we hold them accountable for what they did, right? But what if the person wants to wash themselves of responsibility or wants to escape the consequences of what they did? This happens in work situations when a person is under investigation for a work violation and suddenly they say, Sir, resign na lang po ako. When that happens, what effect would it have on the pending case? This is exactly what Angela N. Hi, Angela is wondering when she submitted this question on our website. And she says, Attorney, how do we manage employees with pending admin cases who would like to resign while their case is still ongoing? Should the leaders HR uh, consider or accept the resignation? And how would the HR or HR leaders handle this? If you would like to know the answer as well, stick around as we talk about your options. This video is brought to you by the Complete Employee Discipline System, a book that teaches owners, managers, and supervisors how to handle any offense easily and systematically. It provides a step-by-step -step procedure for incident reports all the way to the clearance process. Stand your ground and discipline with confidence. Go to info.legalguide.ph forward slash discipline to learn more. Welcome to Legal Guide Philippines, where we simplify the law to help you make better choices. I'm attorney Ramon Ramirez, and I'm with my partner, attorney Erwin Zagala. So today, we're talking about resigning while being investigated. The difficult thing about this is that two processes overlap each other. You're not yet done with one when suddenly another process demands your attention. So you may be thinking, what happens with the investigation? After all, when an employee resigns, they're no longer employed, correct? Yes. What happens with the penalties? Mm -hmm. Are they dropped? What if they don't cooperate saying they're no longer connected with the company mm -hmm. and you, you don't have the right to impose that penalty or violation mm -hmm. upon them? So uh, I think a good way of going about this is to cover three important points. Okay. First point is, does resignation acquit them from the ongoing case? Mm -hmm. Good question, Attorney Ruin. Mm -hmm. And let's answer that right off the bat. No, it doesn't. Why? These are treated as two separate things. And being two separate things, they can, they can proceed independently of each other. Mm -hmm. So, investigation is ongoing. Right, mm -hmm. Attorney Ramon? Yeah. While this is ongoing, the resignation will have its own process. Mm -hmm. Remember, you submit the resignation letter and then you have to do the turnover period and then you still have to uh, uh, be treated as a regular uh, uh, regular employee, mm -hmm. not, not special in any way. It's just that you're doing the turnover for the next 30 days. Okay, So these things proceed independently from each other. Having the resignation process ongoing does not go over or invalidate the investigation. Okay? So, walang kinalaman. Tama. Okay. okay. So, treat them, for, uh, think about them as two separate things. Mm -hmm. Now, this will be material for the next few points. Okay. So, I want to go to point number two, which is, attorney, can you still hold them liable for the violation? Mm -hmm. Okay, remember mm -hmm. I said that these are two separate uh, processes? Yes. Okay. Remember, for the next 30 days, this employee is still employed, correct? And correct. being employed, they are still subject to the same rules and regulations, okay. correct? Tama. So, if ever the investigation concludes within the 30-day period, it's no different than having a regular employee and then a penalty is imposed against them. As a regular employee. Yes. So right. even if you're on your way out, supposing the investigation terminates within turnover period and the judgment is termination, mm -hmm. then before this ends, that employee will be considered a terminated employee rather than a resigned employee. Terminated even if not resigned? Yes, away. because within the 30 days, there's they're no different than any other employee. Okay. And within that 30-day period, mm -hmm. this uh, decision comes in and that penalty has to be applied to that employee. And considering they're still employed by this time, then 
it makes sense that uh, the, that their status would follow the results of the investigation. Which, in that case, terminated employee. Mm-hmm. Wow, okay. So what is the takeaway there? Mm. If you find yourselves in this situation, okay, there are a lot of permutations, but we will try to make it as simple as possible for purposes of this episode, mm-hmm. okay? So as, um, as much as you can, try to terminate the investigation as well as the admin hearing, the issuance of the notices within the turnover period so that there's no question whatsoever as to the status of the employee when the decision was rendered. Okay. So, dapat tapos within the 30 days. Yes. If it exceeds this time period, there may be, well, some complications which I think you should be discussing with your legal counsel or your uh, HR manager because, mm-hmm. well, when this ends, the only thing that you have to latch on to would probably be the clearance and mm, right. the certificate. But I'd rather not go there. Make it as simple as possible. Do it within the time period for turning over because they are still con- considered employees at that point. Nice. Okay. Make it definitive so that you won't be subject to all of these uh, questions or or theories regarding that. Mm-hmm. Now, let's go to point number three. And okay. what if they offer to resign in exchange for dropping the case, Attorney Ramon? Oh. This is where it gets a little bit interesting. I think we have a lot of experiences there no? mm-hmm. uh, for our clients mm-hmm. and uh, in, in the past that uh, something happens instead of going through the investigation, the employee says, uh, Lalapit. Oh, wow. mm-hmm. right. Or uh, sa HR or sa boss na, boss, uh, resign na lang ako. Um, wag niyo na akong, wag niyo nang ituloy yan. Uh, so, para graceful exit ako. Mm-hmm. Tama ba? Uh, usually, that's the, you know, that's the reason. Yes. Uh-huh. So, if that happens, uh, this is something nice to discuss and to talk yeah, about. Because definitely. there are uh, very big differences between the two kinds of scenarios. So, mm-hmm. so when a person resigns, okay. and that is reflected on their paperwork, Mm-hmm. What is the legal implication of that? When you see it in the certificate of employment, resign. Mm-hmm. Attorney Ramon, what do you think? Is the uh, if you're walang, a... walang separation pay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, aside from the fact that there's no separation pay, mm-hmm. uh, as we discussed in our last video, yeah, right. yes. aside from that, what does that tell you about the mode of uh, uh, them ending their relationship? They voluntarily left uh, and in good standing. And the presumption is there was nothing amiss Mm -hmm. or anything wrong with the way they left. They just chose to leave. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's it's uh, pretty much clear Mm. when the mode is resignation. However, if it's via termination and the certificate of employment reflects that, if you were the hiring manager, what what would go into your mind? Why? Why were you terminated? I need to know. And because that might happen in the in my company. What's right? the risk of what? that recurring yes. within my team? Is it something wrong with the employee or whatever? No, I, I want to know. I, that will be my first question. But definitely, it will raise some question marks. Yes, question uh, marks. Unlike the first situation, which, which is resignation. Yes. It's very clear. It's very clean. Very clean. Okay. So, going back to the question, what mm-hmm. if they offer to resign? Is it something that they can demand? No. There is nothing under the law which justifies uh, resignation in lieu of an investigation as a right. There is no legal provision giving the, uh, giving the employee that option. So to be clear, Attorney Irwin, if I say, uh, boss, resign na lang po ako, drop niyo na lang po yung, ano, yung case. Okay. Uh-huh. That can be considered, but the management is under no compulsion or obligation to accept it and make it happen. Okay. So, hindi required, guys. Ang sabi ni Attorney Irwin. No? In other words, it's discretionary. Discretionary. So, when you say discretionary, it can go both ways. It can be a yes or it can be a no. Mm-hmm. If it becomes a no, then the investigation would probably push through. Mm-hmm. Correct? Yep. If it's a yes, then management has the discretion to drop the case and process the resignation in lieu of the investigation. Nice. Okay. Now, you might be thinking, Attorney Irwin, why isn't it a right? Wouldn't, it, wouldn't it make sense? Uh, you you get rid of a bad employee and uh, this, there's less work. Magre-resign na nga ako eh. Diba? Mm-hmm. So, para wala, wala nang investigation okay. or whatever. Okay. Aside from the fact that it's not in the law, mm-hmm. 
having that as a right would lead to an absurd situation. Bakit absurd, Attorney Irwin? Okay. Hmm. So, if you make it a right, what hmm. happens is you will be teaching employees to do all sorts of violations, steal, <laughs> violate, uh, be insubordinate, all because they have a loophole, which would be just to resign. Right, right. So, even if uh ng uh, 200 million in cash, Magre-resign na lang ako para most, tapos na. <laughs> most, most probably, the law never intended it that way. Can you, ima- so. can you imagine this situation? So, uh, you keep your sales from mm-hmm. your operations in your office. Okay. In a vault. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, here's this employee thinking, Oh, I can do anything I want with the money. If they catch me, I always have a... a sca- uh, escape hatch. Escape hatch, oh. which is resign. Mm. So this employee hypothetically goes to the vault, carts away 1 million pesos, mm-hmm. and then when you catch them, oh, boss, resign na lang. Ah, <laughs> the law never intended that situation to happen. And that's why I think uh, it was not given as a matter of right. Mm-hmm. Now, for smaller violations, supposing the employee just neglected to do something, you know that there was no malice. Mm-hmm. Uh, for instance, employee forgets to close the company freezer. Okay. And there's uh, raw materials there, mm. meat, uh, vegetables, fruits. And because the freezer was left uh, a little bit ajar. Ajar. Yeah. Uh, the follow- It was a long weekend. Mm. Okay. So right. two or three days. And when the workers got back to the off, uh, to the workplace the following week, everything was rotten and spoiled. Mm. So lost sales, lost raw materials. Okay. So you as a manager, you know that you cannot let that pass. Mm. Because if you do, it might set a bad example and you won't be able to hold other employees accountable. Right. Correct? Right. So you need to put down the hammer on this situation mm-hmm. and there needs to be consequences. Now, you know for a fact that that employee did not intend it. It was an accident. Mm-hmm. And during the investigation, the employee says, Sir, I am deeply regretful for what I did. Sorry po. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But just to uh, get things moving and uh, just to move on from this situation, can you please permit me to resign and... Uh, just drop the case so that I can find another job afterwards. So in that situation, this is so much, so different from the first one where yung yung nakaw, yung isa. there was malice, uh, yeah. correct? In this case, nakikiusap naman eh. mm-hmm. And they are deeply regretful for what they did. In cases like this, I would probably consider that uh, no more investigation, no more case yeah. uh-huh. uh, uh, in exchange for the resignation. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, two things about that that I want to stress. Number one, if they want to resign instead of the investigation, please make sure that there was no compulsion involved. Ah, uh, okay. The idea or the motivation for that should have come from the employee. Mm-hmm. Uh, under no circumstances should you pressure them. Magresign ka na! Magresign ka na! Kundi, kakasuhan ka namin! Oh, oh. Ah, right, right. Okay, please don't do that. That's bad, huh? Do not, under any circumstances, do that because mm-hmm. that will open you up to legal exposure. Mm-hmm. That can be treated as forced resignation. Yun. Okay, so instead of you having a shorter time dealing with this case, it will compound. Mm-hmm. Okay, so there should be no compulsion involved. It should be entirely voluntary on the part of the employee. Nice. Tip number two when okay. it comes to this is what is the timing? Yes. What okay, so, is the timing? So. Uh, there are some circumstances wherein the employee is just starting the uh, investigation and then the, immediately the person being investigated offers to resign. Okay. Do I recommend it at that point? Could be, but it's a little bit risky. So take this scenario, for example. Ma'am, sir, resign na lang po ako. Hmm. Okay. So we'll wait for your resignation letter and we'll drop the case. One month goes past. Hmm. Oh, Mr. or Miss Employee, where's your resignation letter? Ha <laughs> Ma'am, sir. DC. DC. <laughs> uh, I changed my mind. Oh, okay. So I'd rather go through the investigation because I believe I'm innocent. <gasps> so one month has passed from the time of the incident, and that's the only time you will be starting the investigation mm. formally and 
that's the only time you will be sending out the notices to explain, the incident reports. Mm. So that will look very, very bad on the part of the company. Versus my suggested version. Mm -hmm. So in case an employee is trying to negotiate a resignation mm -hmm. in lieu of investigation, my suggestion, wait until the issuance of the notice to explain. Okay. At the very least. Right. Have the notice to explain issued. That way, when they say, attorney, ah, no, no, boss, 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 uh, boss. Um, HR. can you please uh, allow me to resign in lieu of the investigation? Sure, no problem. Give me, uh, just submit your resignation papers and we'll have it processed. One month goes by and no resignation paper. Oh, Mr. or Miss Employee, what happened to your resignation? Ha, I changed my mind. Okay, no problem. Anyway, the notice to explain has already been issued. Mm. So please submit your explanation within the next five days and then we'll just continue with the uh, process or the procedure. What's the difference between the two cases? In the first case, wherein you just uh, issue everything after they refuse to resign, that can even be treated as you know evidence that you were trying to pressure them. Uh, the employee mm. might even spin a story saying, oh, they were forcing me to resign, and when I didn't, they filed mm. a case to harass Tama. me. Tama. Uh, right. Versus uh, scenario number two, wherein, the, the disciplinary process was started to begin with. You were just trying to accommodate the possible resignation. When that did not happen, then you just continued with the process that was already in place. I hope you guys are seeing the difference between the two. How, how big of an advantage you have if the disciplinary process is already ongoing or in place before you consider the resignation. Nice. Agreed. Okay. So, I, I guess, Attorney Ramon, it's time for a recap. What sure, do you think? absolutely. So, uh, thank you, Attorney Ramon. So, we talked about three things today. When an employee wants to uh, resign in lieu of uh, uh, an investigation or they do something wrong. So, the, the first question, and you, uh, you talked about three things. The mm -hmm. first is, uh, if they resign, does that acquit them from the case? Mm -hmm. And your answer is a resounding no. No? So, it does not acquit them from their case because these are two separate things. Tama? Attorney mm -hmm. All right. And the second thing you talked about is um, can we still hold them liable for the violation? Mm -hmm. And of course, coming from number one where we said that uh, these are two separate things, resignation and the investigation, you can also still hold them liable for their violation. But to make things simple, mm -hmm. when you do the decision, mm -hmm. it, what's our recommendation? It has to be within, within the, the turnover period or within the 30 days. Could it be after? Yes, but yeah. that may complicate things. Mm -hmm. You may have to consult a lawyer or your HR manager for that. Keep things simple. Keep it within the turnover period wherein they are still considered employees. Nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, the third thing that you talked about is what if they offer to resign in exchange for dropping the case? Mm -hmm. And uh, ang sabi ni Attorney Irwin, uh, that is discretionary on the part of the employer. Magic word, discretionary. Mm -hmm. Nobody can force you into yes. it. So it's not a matter of right. You can be careful in Pilitan as an employer to uh, drop the case. No? Um, but you may or may not consider pwedeng no, pwedeng yes, depending on the situation. Mm -hmm. Am I correct? Yes. And as for the timing, mm -hmm. he said something about the timing. About when they offer to resign, mm -hmm. when is the best time to to talk about the resignation? Mm -hmm. When when it should be when the disciplinary process has already been Begun. started, and more particularly when the notice to explain has already been issued. Correct. Now, incidentally, if you guys need help with drafting the notice to explain, we have a fantastic course on that. You can enroll at info.legalguide.ph forward slash nte to learn how to do. Uh, notices to explain properly. Yeah. So I guess that's it for our recap, Attorney Ramon. Welcome to our Did It Stick segment. So Attorney Ramon, mm. let's try it out whether they listen Sige, and please. can they apply the concepts to real world situations. Let's do it now. All right. So situation number one. Mm. What's Attorney, the situation? Okay. So there was a pending case. Mm -hmm. Now they resigned. Mm -hmm. And of course, when you resign, uh, general rule is there's a 30-day turnover period. Correct. A, they did not come back. Okay. Um, wala na lang. Just, uh, hindi na lang pumasok. They left. All right. What do you do? How does that affect 
the pending case. So there mm. are multiple ways of looking at this. Mm. Um, uh, what is this? Did they consider it an immediate resignation mm. on their own? Or, mm. or um, I, I don't know what the employee is thinking at this point. However, in so far as the management is concerned, what are your options? Okay, so not appearing for work after resigning, mm. it can be a possible case for a wall. Or some I'm, sense without leave. Yes. Mm -hmm. So here's where it gets complicated. Mm -hmm. Remember that we have a pending case? Yes. Now, there's another possible case. You mm -hmm. should be sending out return to work orders and a notice to explain for the new offense, which mm -hmm. is a wall. Mm -hmm. So employees, if you are in this situation, don't complicate or make your lives harder by not doing the turnover period. Mm -hmm. Your cases may compound or increase. So just do the turnover period and ask nicely if you want to take this route, but don't go AWOL. Now for managers, if you guys need help handling AWOL cases, we have a fantastic workshop on that as well. And you can enroll at info.legalguy.ph forward slash AWOL to learn more. Mm, nice. So that's a that's a situation that usually comes up in real life. Mm -hmm. I hope our our students were able to take note of that. Yeah. Now, Attorney Ramon, is okay. there another scenario that happens in real life that we can use as a test case? Yeah, sure, Attorney Irwin. What if um, can they demand uh, that the resignation uh, put a stop to the case? By saying that I am no longer your employee. Yes. I resigned. Mm. I left. What? Can you they... do not have any power here. Yes. Uh, uh, okay. Is that possible? Is that possible? No. Okay. The word demand, it's a little bit, uh, I'm a little bit allergic to that because when you say demand, there has to be some legal basis backing you up. In this case, there, there isn't. An employee cannot demand the dropping of the case just because they resigned. Again, remember what we said in the lesson itself? Mm -hmm. These are how many? Two, mm -hmm. two separate things. So the pending investigation and the resignation, they are separate from each other. Having the resignation in place does not invalidate or uh, get rid of the pending investigation. Now, for most of you, this episode was more than enough. And if it makes your life easier, then you're welcome. But there are those of you who will watch this and end up asking more questions, such as, Attorney, how do we hold guilty employees accountable? Mm -hmm. Or how do we create the legal documents needed to terminate them? Or, Attorney, how do you create policies that protect the company in the first place so this doesn't happen? If that's you, then I invite you to check out the Complete Employee Discipline System book where we teach you a roadmap to handling employee discipline cases from start to finish. Get the book at info.legalguide.ph forward slash discipline today. Now, to add to that, if you want us to tackle your question in our show, as we did for uh, our, our reader, uh, go to www.legalguide.ph and click the Submit Topic button. Next, of course, we'd like to know what's your biggest takeaway from today's video. So please write it down in the comments and let's talk about it. Last, if you feel we've earned a good rating, please give us a like and subscribe because it gives us feedback that we're doing a good job and it encourages us to do more videos. One last thing, it's human nature to try and avoid painful situations. That applies to employees who are undergoing investigations right now. It may appeal to them to take the easy way out and just leave. But as a boss, it's your job to use your discernment. Would it serve the employee's higher good if they leave without learning the lesson? Or would it be better for them to experience the consequences so they can learn from it? Use this as your guiding light when deciding whether to allow resignations in lieu of investigations in dependency of cases. So wasn't that simple? Now go make better choices! choices.